Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Terramina blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Queen Terramina's and Orient Neighbor Television. I'd like to welcome those watching our local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Orient Neighbor Television. I'll talk about this week here um, on the podcast here. We're going to recap a lot of football here. Talk about some key storylines, key injuries. Um, and we're going to look forward to um, week number four of the um, high school season here. Um, let's look at the our main story here is there were a lot of quarterbacks who got hurt and also who got um, who didn't play. Um, obviously, you look at, you know, Three specific games in particular we're going to talk about here for sure here. Um, you know, that were big impacts in their games. Um, and what is their status going forward? Um, you know, and I think that'll be something to really talk about here um, on this week's episode of the podcast is, of course, um, three particular teams um, losing quarterbacks um, within the last two weeks. And we're going to focus on that aspect of it. Um, let's start with... Um, with Farmington, um, obviously, you know, um, they did not have, um, you know, I watched their game against North Farmington. Um, they didn't have, um, Julian Johnson, their uh, main starter. He was out. Um, don't know what type of injury he suffered in the Holly game. Um, but he did not play in the North Farmington game. And that was a, that proved to be a huge, um, a huge issue for Farmington, especially offensively, um, where they just, they they struggled to score. I mean, they really struggled to score in a rivalry game against North Farmington. So when I look at Farmington's outlook, you know, they went with um, you know, they went with Antoine Bailey um at quarterback. Um, now he's listed as a running back. Um, they um they went with some Wildcat stuff as well. Um, you know, so that was a big loss for Farmington not having their quarterback Julian Johnson. Um. I'm not sure if he's going to be available for the um, Troy Athens game, um, but you could tell the effects, you know, because I thought Farmington defensively, they played really well in that game against North Farmington. I really thought that. Um, but, you know, when you look at the injury to Julian Johnson, that was a big, big deal. I mean, that was a serious deal, especially – affecting their offense. I mean, in Farmington's offense, you know, they like to spread it out. Um, you know, they have their proven players on there. Um, but, you know, I didn't expect a 20-7 to score like that. I mean, it was a really, it was a really tight game throughout. Um, you know, North scored first in late in the second quarter. Um, it was a um, passing touchdown. Um, and then, Farmington responded with a um, long touchdown run themselves. And then, you know, in the early part of the third quarter, and then North Farmington responded with the um, Duke Blanche touchdown um, to take a 12-7 lead. And that was a score throughout until very late in the game where North Farmington ended up, sco or, um, ended up scoring a touchdown um, late in the game and got a two-point conversion. That was, the, that, was, that was the ball game there. So you got to ask yourself there with, North Farmington is, you know, what if Julian Johnson played? If he played, that's a much different ball game. I mean, it really is. It's a much different ball game where maybe you could think, um, you know, that's a um, that's a totally different ball game. I mean, because you really look at the stat line the last two weeks. I mean, Farmington's played. I mean, like they beat Oak Park seventeen six one thirty three seven over Holly. Um, they kind of knew, and then only scored some points against, um, North Farmington. A lot of that, I think, had to do with Julian Johnson being out. And, you know, and he's a big part of that offense for Coach Jason Albright. Um, so that's going to be something to really figure out if you're North Farmington going forward is, can you figure out, you know, you know, the, the quarterback situation if Johnson doesn't play? you know, that's going to be the key going forward for them is, you know, what's going to be their answer at quarterback? I mean, do you move a player up from JV? Do you move a play? I mean, do you have somebody within your, within your roster that can be a backup quarterback, you know, that can play backup quarterback? 
Um, so that was a um, you know, so that was a a surprise there with that that um that game in the pharmacy cup, you know, but Julian Johnson not playing really, really hurt Farmington in that game. It really did. Um, let's go now to Harper Woods. I mean, Harper Woods, they took on Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, they end up losing 45 to 12. Um, a lot of that, you know, you really look at it, um, you know, was Harper Woods quarterback, um, Nate Washoe, he got hurt. Um, I don't know. I mean, it was an ankle injury. I watched the film, um, and it was, it did not look good. It really didn't look good. Um, Washoe did not come back the rest of the game. Um, you know, um, they went with Dakota Gary at quarterback. Um, you know, and then, um, you know, they tried. I mean, Harper Woods really tried in that game against Nobody Detroit Catholic Central. Um, but, you know, defensively is where their problem was in that game against the Shamrocks. I mean, defensively, they just weren't. They weren't, I mean, they were not very good. The last two weeks, Harper Woods defensively has allowed, um, I would say, I think 83 points in the last two weeks. That's not good. They've been outscored 83-12 in the last two weeks. That's not good. And now you add Rochelle, who is injured right now. We don't know where he's going to be. We don't know where he's at. Will we play this week in Stony Creek? I don't know. I mean... You know, there is so many questions for the Pioneers right now, considering where they're at right now. They're in a really difficult spot right now, sitting at one and two. Um, so, you know, and obviously playing Oxford, playing against Nova Detroit Catholic Central. Um, the Washington injury is huge because he likes to throw the ball around. I mean, last season, they had the luxury of having Washington and Stephon Buford. Buford kind of more the athletic quarterback. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, Dakota can play um, quarterback. But I'm just saying is, you know, when you look at what Harper Woods needs, you definitely need Garriott's athletic ability at wide receiver. You definitely need that. And then you need, um, and then obviously in the secondary, you're going to need him to play there. So, you know, so you look at Coach Rob Owen. I mean, his team's got some problems. I mean, he's got he's got to figure some things out. I mean, when you look at Harper Woods' situation, um, you know, going forward, I mean, the Groves game is going to be extremely difficult. Rochester could be very difficult, and also the um, Stony Creek game that could be very difficult. So when you look at Harper Woods, they need Washington back quickly. And if he's not back quickly, I think this team's in some trouble. I think Harper Woods is in some trouble because, you know, you look at your defense has not been very good the last two weeks. Your your offense is really sputtered. I mean, they've thrown picks. They've had penalties at inopportune times. I mean, Harper Woods is in a difficult, difficult spot right now. They're in an extremely difficult spot. And now you add that Washington's hurt. Now, you know, you put yourself, you put yourself really against it right now. So for Harper Woods, they've got to respond. They've got to find a way to respond um, quickly. they got to, they got to respond. If they want to get back into the league race, if they want to get back, um, you know, they got to start winning some games. I mean, you know, but they got to get Ryan, they got to get Nate, they got to get Nate Rochelle healthy right now. They got to get him healthy. I mean, that's the key going forward. If, if they can get Rochelle healthy, um, then, you know, maybe that this could take care, it could take care of itself. I mean, like, but the problem is for Harper Woods is, you know, the rest of your schedule, um, Rochester and Stony Creek are your D1, D1 opponents. You got to win those two games. I mean, but then you got to also beat Groves. I mean, I don't know if I see that right now with with Harper Woods right now, especially with the way that they are right now and the fact that their defense has not looked very good in the last two weeks. I mean, you know, and bottom line is, you know what I mean, 83 points allowed in the last two weeks. Now, I'll be, yeah, it's against Oxford, no by Detroit Catholic Central. But still, 
you know, when you have an experienced team like Harper Woods does, especially on the defense side of the ball, that can't happen to you. I mean, you know, so there is some serious problems right now with Harper Woods, um, especially on the defensive side of the football. But now you add Nate Washoe's injury. Um, it's going to be, I mean, like, you know, it could be, that that just makes things a lot worse right now if you're Coach Rob Oden. I mean, that, you really got to get that, you know, you got to really get Washoe back, you know what I mean, if, um, you know, and then you got you got you got to go back to the drawing board a little bit when you look at with Harper Woods' situation. Um, so really, that's the situation right now with Harper Woods when it comes to their quarterback situation. Now we look at Lake Orient situation. Um, second quarter of the game against Troy, um, T.R. Hill tried to um, ran for the ran for the ran the ball, um, landed awkwardly on his shoulder, um, had to go um, out of the game. Um, Ended up, um, ended up being in a sling, um, had to be taken to the hospital. Um, Brody Thompson came in, started second half, had three rushing touchdowns, led Lake Orion to a 32 nothing win against Troy. Uh, so when I look at Lake Orion, um, the T.R. Hill injury, uh, it could not have come at a terrible time for this team because... They now have to run the gauntlet. Having to play Oxford this week, you got Adams, West Bloomfield, Clarkston, all in a span of four weeks. That's not easy at all. That's not going to be easy. And you don't have your quarterback, your three-year starting quarterback, that, that could be a problem. That could be a serious problem. But when you look at the play Brody Thompson made, you know, Brody Thompson, you know, he played really well against Troy. And Troy's not a bad defense. They're not bad. But, you know, when you look at what T.R. Hill gives you, he gives you that um, that threat from the quarterback position to run the ball. I'm not saying Brody Thompson doesn't, but he does. But, you know, in the kind of second half, Lake Orange didn't really have to change much. I mean... They didn't have to really change much against Troy. They really didn't. Um, so if you're Coach Chris Bell, you know, this is a really difficult situation. You know, the fact you don't have your three-year starting quarterback. Uh, but what really helps Lake Orion is that you have proven playmakers on that team. Jane Burrell has been getting better. You're riding a really good offensive line. Um, and then... And then also you have Jackson Vasquez, who's really played well in the first um, three games of the year. He's played really good football. And then not to mention your defense has been playing real, been playing good. I really thought in the Troy game they didn't look as good as I, in the last two weeks. Um, but your defense is going to get tested against against an, a very experienced Oxford team. You know, who, who's got a quarterback in Jack Hendricks. You have a running back in Luke Johnson. You have proven wide receivers who've gotten better. Um, I'm telling you, you know, not having T.R. Hill for this game is going to hurt Lake Orion. It'll hurt them. It might, it might not. But anytime in sports, when you have to go to a backup quarterback, you know, a lot of things change. A lot of things change. You know, you're going to have to, you know, go conservative with your play calling. Or you're going to have to go, you know what I mean, like, you know, do something different, you know. And, you know, when you look at the situation with Lake Orion, if, if Brody Thompson surprises people, especially in the Oxford game, you know, makes a lot of noise, makes a lot of, you know. But this is something teams have got to prepare for. Is the fact that your starting quarterback goes down, the backup quarterback has to get has to get a fair share of reps, and you know, and you know, a lot of these um a lot of these teams they do that during practice. Is they get the starting quarterback a lot of reps, and they give the backup quarterback reps. I mean, like, you know, I it, I mean, like it, you know. So the situation. You know, at Lake Orion, you know, it'll be very interesting to see what happens there at Lake Orion, especially, 
you know, with Brody Thompson likely starting this week against Oxford, um, which is going to be, it's a very interesting matchup. So those are the three quarterbacks um, that we're keeping an eye on is the situations over at um, Farmington, over at Harper Woods, and also at Lake Orion. Um, especially with the um, quarterback situations there. Um, but, you know, with Thompson's defense, he had a big game against Troy. I mean, he had three rushing touchdowns, as I mentioned. Um, this young man's got athletic ability. I mean, he has played a lot of football. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, so when I look at Lake Orion, um, it'll be interesting to see how they respond going forward. Um, especially, you know, when you look at, um, you know, especially when you look at the quarterback situation, um, surrounding them. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's recap all the games this week here around the league. Um, first game, we're going to go with the goal first. Um, you know, we, um, we're going to go goal first here. Um, Ferndale 35, Royal Oak, nothing. I watched that game. I watched that game on Royal Oak, some um, schools' YouTube page. And Ferndale's really improved. They've really improved. Um, I thought um, Cullen Hawk, he had a nice game um, for um, Ferndale. Run, rushing attack played well. I mean, Royal Oak, honestly, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was offensively, they tried, they went more of a spread look. Um, to me, offensively, Royal Oak's got a big problem there. Offensively. I mean, what is this team? I mean, what is Coach Colin Campbell's team? I mean, offensively, I, they're trying to spread it out. Um, I mean, they, they had some, they had some struggles in that game. They had some struggles. They really, really struggled in that game. I mean, they have not, they haven't played well. They haven't really played well. Um, last few weeks, they just have not. Um, but Royal Oak, you know, and, and I noticed, you know what I mean? Like, you know, they, they've been in games, I mean, like, but when, when, they, when they get worn down, they tend to struggle. And their next three games is going to be on the road. I mean, don't get me wrong. Their next three games are on the road. Um, so Royal Oak's got a difficult path ahead of them. They really got a difficult path. Um, anytime your offense struggles, your defense tends to struggle. And that's really what's been going on with Royal Oak right now. Ferndale, they've really picked it up since the, um, you know, ever since that loss to, um, Madison Heights Lampier. They had that big one against North Farmington. Um, and then knocking off Royal Oak. Um, Ferndale right now, they're starting to click. They are really starting to click on all cylinders right now. And for them, that's a good sign going forward. Um, now, the people say about Ferndale, is Avondale still their toughest, toughest task? Toughest task. And I would say yes. I mean, they had that bounce back win against um, Macomb Luther and North winning 34-13. Um, I mean, Justin Greer Sykes had a big game. They finally got something in the passing game. Um, defense played all right. But for Coach Bob Meyer, that's a big win for them because, you know, they had two really difficult losses to Seaholm and also to, um, Cedar Springs. I thought the Cedar Springs one loss really, that was, that was, that really hurts right now with that Cedar Springs game. I mean, that's the loss that I would just go like I'm up at arms at. It's because that loss to Cedar Springs. I mean, yes, they had an experienced team. They ran a lot of that um wing T stuff, but still, that's not a good loss for Avondale. Really, it's not. So we'll see if that if that win against Macomb Luther North is um is a turnaround thing. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see. And then there is Berkeley winning their first game at Hurley Field, the new look Hurley Field, snapping their 14 game losing streak, beating Pontiac 41 to 6. Um 
when I look at this game here, Pontiac, I mean, I mean, Pontiac with them, I mean, honestly, I mean, like, yeah, this was a revenge game for, um, Berkeley, for Berkeley after losing to Pontiac last year on their home field. Um, but, you know, when you look at, for Berkeley fans, celebrating a win against Pontiac. I mean, you know, when I look at the teams that got ahead of them, I mean, you know, you got, you've had some tough luck. I mean, you've had, you had a really tough loss to Troy Athens. You had a really tough loss to Wald Lake um, Central in overtime. I mean, last three weeks, your defense has been pretty good. I mean, only allowing, only allowing 33 points. That's not bad. I mean, offensively, you know, scoring 41 against Pontiac, you know what I mean? That, that, you know, I'm going to give Pontiac a pass here because when I look at Pontiac, they've been really struggling. They've been struggling. Um, haven't been the same team since that Detroit Frederick Douglass game. Um, and then they played Troy. The last three weeks, the last two weeks, Pontiac's been outscored. Um, has been outscored um seventy six to um six in the last two games. That's not good. That is not good at all. I mean, if you're coach Wendell Jefferson, something needs to change with that offensive scheme. Something needs to change. But especially if your defense is being left out there way too long. Then that could be really a pro. That could be a problem if your defense is out there too long, and that's really been the case for Pontiac. Is that been their defense has been out there way too long, and you know, and it really showed. It really showed. Um, for Berkeley, the first win, you know, on their new field, everybody's happy. You know, but here's the thing I would say to Coach um, Casey Humes. You got that first win out, out, out the system. Now, you got to keep getting better. You know what I mean? You got to beat some teams you're not supposed to beat. Um, you got Ferndale coming up. You're likely a big underdog in that game. And then you play Royal Oak the next week. So, when you look at Berkeley, there's winnable games on there. There really is. But... You got, but they've got to keep, they got to keep on um, finding that offensive identity. They've got to keep finding, you know, they had that good start. They had a great start. But now it comes down to is can Berkeley sustain success? That is the big question that I have for um, Berkeley is can they sustain success? Because they cannot, they're in trouble. If they cannot, they're in trouble. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there. But, when I look at the division right now, I still think, you know, Abigail Ferndale right now are the top two teams in the division. Then I would say Berkeley, Royal Oak, Pontiac. So, that's my take right now on the gold. Is, you know, obviously, you know, Ferndale right now, I have Ferndale ranked eighth right now in the poll. Um, Avondale, I still have them unranked right now, um, despite getting their first win against Macomb Luther North. Um, Berkeley, I need to see how they do against Ferndale. You know, in that game, with, in that game last year between Berkeley and Ferndale was a nightmare at Hurley. 61-8 to eight last year. So there should be some motivation for Berkeley going to Ferndale um, for that one. And then you have Royal Oak. Um, you know, bottom line, Royal Oak's struggling. Um, and then there's Pontiac. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. We will see going forward there. Let's go to the blue now. I mean, when you look at the blue, um, we talked in, in length about the um, Farmington, North Farmington game earlier in the podcast, but, you know, obviously for North Farmington running, they found a recipe for success in running the football. Um, Terrence James and Duke Blanche really were the big keys in that game against a very, very good Farmington defense. 
Um, you know, Duke Blanche, I think he had two touchdowns. Um, Terrence James had a, threw a touchdown pass. Um, when I look at North Farmington, um, I look at the Raiders and I think to myself, what if? What if they beat Lavoni Stevenson? What if they beat Ferndale? This could be easily be a 3-0 team right now. They could easily be a 3-0 team. But they had two really, really rough losses. I mean, the game against Lavoni Stevenson, they couldn't get in the end zone twice. They couldn't get in the end zone twice. They were stopped on fourth down twice. And then against Ferndale, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't get in the end zone against them either. So, albeit, you know, you look at, they took advantage of Farmington's, um, you know, quarterback woes, especially the injury to him, Julian Johnson. Um, they took it, I mean, like they, um, Terrence James had a big game, had a big game at, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, defense was solid, but, you know, Duke Blanche had a big game as well. So, but Coach John Herstein, this is the start of something. Might be a start of something. Um, Farmington, they need Julian Johnson back. As I mentioned earlier, they really need him back because if he's if he's out for a long, sustainable amount of time, they're in trouble. I mean, that's really the honesty right there. I can tell Farmington fans is they need Julian Johnson back. If they can get him back, I think that um, you know, I really think that um. Farmington is a much better team with Johnson in the lineup. I mean, but we'll see. I mean, like, we'll see if he comes back for the Troy Athens game. We'll see what happens. Um, I know the good folks at Farmington TV 10 is going to have that game. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, Oak Park, Troy Athens. This was a good game. I, this was a good game. I mean, Oak Park um, won this game. Um, I'm telling you, Oak Park's getting better. I mean, they... They found some things after starting off the year 0-1, losing to Farmington. Um, had a bounce back win. You know, they, they bounced had a bounce back win against um, you know, and then Troy Athens, I I don't know how in the world Troy Athens lost this game. They're up by sixteen up sixteen nothing. Oak Park scores twenty four unanswered to beat to win twenty four to sixteen. So when I look at this game, it kind of, it's kind of a reflection of both teams. It kind of is. I mean, Troy Athens, you know, Troy Athens is the pure Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, they are like, there's one week they look really good against Berkeley. Uh, the next week, they just look, didn't look very good against them. Um, and that's the Seon game. This game here kind of was the tail of two ass. I mean, like, you know, Troy Athens took a 16 nothing lead. And then Oak Park answered back, scored 24 unanswered, um, winning, winning 24-16. The defense has gotten better for Oak Park. I mean, the defense is really, I mean, in the game against Royal Oak, I mean, it was a 19-7 game. I mean, the last two weeks, Oak Park defensively, they've allowed 23 points. I mean, they allowed 23 points. I mean, first game, they allowed 17. I mean, so you really look at Oak Park, I mean, 40 points allowed, that's really, you know, that's really um, not bad. I mean, like, you know, that's really not bad. I mean, so 40 points allowed in three games, that's actually pretty good um, defensively. Offensively is where, you know, they've got to find ways to, you know what I mean, they've, they've gotten better. So Oak Park, we're going to find out what they're going to be really be made of when they play Seahome. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens there in that one. But Oak Park is a team on the rise to really keep an eye on. Troy Athens, I, I just don't know where they're at right now. I just really don't know where they're at. Um, Troy, um, lost a tough one to Lake Orion, 32 nothing. A lot of positives for them. Um, Noel Ory made some plays, especially on third down. Um, Jalen Peacock had a nice game. Um. But really, you know, offensively, they're just going to get in the end zone. Um, and I'll be at yeah, Lake Warriors a really good defense. They got a really good defense. Um, but 
you know, for Troy, there is some positives here. I mean, there really is from this game. And, you know, you can't really, you know, you really can't, like, um, fault them. You know what I mean in this game. But they do have, they got another tough game coming up with Notre Dame prep. Um, which I think that's going to be a really difficult game, especially what they did against Grand Rapids um, West Catholic. They were really impressive in that game. Okay, Catholic Central, like Grand Rapids Catholic Central. They were really impressive in that game. Um, they also have a win against Jackson Lutheran Christie, which is, that's going to be really, really interesting with that game over at Troy. I mean, it'll really be interesting. But there were some positives, I mean, for Troy. Real positives there. Then we have Seaholm and Bloomfield Hills. Um, Seaholm, you know, they, they, you know, can you really judge them? I mean, the Avenel game was a good judging point for them. But the last two games against Troy Athens and Bloomfield Hills, you really, you really can't judge them. I mean, Troy Athens is a pure Jekyll and Hyde. Bloomfield Hills, that's something to really, really think about. Um, I think when you look at, when you look at Seaholm, the test starts this week. It's going to start for them against Oak Park. So when I look at the night, when I look at the, um, that game in Night Valley, that's going to be interesting to see. Has Oak Park improved enough against Severe? That's the big question. Seaholm's a completely different team than they were last year. But they're still rolling. They're still on the right, they're still clicking on all cylinders right now. They look like a danger, they look like a dangerous team that can make some serious noise. So when I look at Seaholm, they're clicking right now. When I look at Bloomfield Hills, I don't know what to think. 117 to 7 last three weeks. How? How do you explain it? How do you explain it? Last three weeks, it's been bad. It's been really bad. I mean, I don't know what to say about the Blackhawks and Coach Dan Laurie's team. I don't know. Bottom line is, you know, I don't know what to say about Bill Hills. I really don't. It's just mind-boggling when I see the scores. You know, I mean, like, first week, I mean, like, 35-7, you lose to Troy. Then you play Dimmer and Devon Child, lose 42 nothing, And then last week, 37 nothing. Something's seriously wrong here with Bloopy Hills. Seriously. Something's wrong here. I don't know if it's, you got to change. You There's got to be some changes over there at Bloomfield Hills. There's seriously got to be some changes. Do you change your scheme? Do you change your um, personnel? I mean, there's got to be something, you know, to get Bloomfield Hills back in the right foot here. I mean, this team has not been the same since beating North Farmington last year by one point in overtime. They lost a lot of key players. But it's, it's mind-boggling when you look at the stats, you know, 117 to 7. It's it's hard to think with this team. You have a Division One enrollment, and you're allowing 117 points the last three weeks. <laughs> when you look at it, when you look at it, I mean, you're right now allowing 39 points a game. That's bad. That is bad. And this, they, they, can, they gotta figure this out quick. <laughs> I mean, they're, they, this is, they're not even competitive right now. That's dishonesty right there. When you're allowing 39 points a game and you're in the blue, you know, there's no words to describe it. Really isn't. And then you look at the rest of your schedule coming. You still got to play Farmington. You got North Farmington this week. 
I mean, you still got to play. You got Oak Park still on the schedule. I mean, <laughs> it's hard to imagine with this team. They got to get it figured out and quick. If not, it's going to be a longer season than it's already been. We'll see what happens with them. We'll see what happens. When I look at the blue right now, I think right now, Seahawks my best team. Then I would have to say, I would have to put Oak Park right now, the way they're playing. Farmington <laughs> is my third best team. Troy Athens is my fourth best team. Um, and then you look at, um, and Bloomby Hills, Bloomby Hills is my last place team. Um, Troy Athens is my sixth best, is my sixth best team. <laughs> um, so right now I would have to say Seahome, I would have to say Seahome, Oak Park, Farmington, North Farmington, um, Troy, Troy Athens, Oak Park. That's really what it is right now. now people would say, well, why would you say North Farming Farmington or North Farmington? If Julian Johnson played in that game, that's a different ballgame. It really is. But credit to North Farmington. They got the um, Farmington Cup back, and it's over at um over on the North Farmington campus for a year. So we'll see what happens there going forward. Let's go to the white. Um <laughs> Harper Woods, we talked about the quarterback issues, the defensive issues. Um Obviously, injury to him, Nate Washington was a big deal for them. Um, Groves, I don't really see an issue with them at all. I mean, they're just clicking on all cylinders right now. Now, there was talk about Groves maybe going undefeated in the league. Undefeated rest of the way. Schedule looks promising. Um, you know, a South Lion game could be interesting, but you never know. I mean, it's a real possibility Groves could go undefeated. It, it's a real possibility. Um, you know, as they get ready for the postseason. So, we'll see. I mean, I really like where Groves is at right now. The way they're playing. Defensively, they look really good. Um, Coach Brennan Flirty's team, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. They really are. Um, Rochester. I mean, really impressed with what they did against um, a against a t winning 33-14. They found themselves a quarterback. They found themselves a quarterback. And Jack Lauer is playing really well right now. So we know a lot about Rochester when they play um, Groves this week. But Rochester, I like where they're at right now. I really like where Coach Eric Vernon has his team at right now. They got a quarterback. Um, so we'll see where they're at. But I really like where they're at. I mean, good one against A&T. 2-1 on the air. Only lost with Adams. They battled them tough. Um, score against them, but good win for um, Rochester there against a and and you know, with them, last two weeks, you really got to look at it. You really got to look at it. I mean, like, 81-14 last two weeks. It's not winning football at all. Albeit, they played Clarkston, they played Rochester, you know? They allowed 48 against um allowed 48 against Clarkston and then 33 against um against Rochester. They've got to figure some things out. And it ain't getting any better this week. They got West Bluefield coming there. So that's a difficult game for AT. They're in a really tough patch right now. The Warriors are in a really tough patch right now. And then there's Stony Creek. Stony Creek, as I said, you know what I mean, with them. They're going through that transition period. Has to happen during the year. You know, and I said this before the season started. They're going to go through a transition period. And they're going through it right now. They're really going through it right now. So, we'll see what happens to Stony Creek. But um, Coach Rick Powell, they, he's got a program building over there. Um, But right now, they're going through some struggles right now. And I think a lot of that's the coaching transition. Um, that it has to happen during the year, and you know, and 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 it has to happen during the season, you know. So we'll see what happens. So overall, in the white, I would say Groves my top team. 
I'll put Rochester 2 right now, Harper Woods 3, um, Stony Creek 4, A&T 5. That is my take in the, um, in the white right now. Let's go to the red. Um, Lake Orion, we talked about the um, TR Hill injury. Um, I still think with this team, there's enough talent on this team, you know, to be, to be right where they need to be. I mean, Brody Thompson played really well last week against Troy. He played really well. And, you know, this game would give him a lot of confidence. And, but the gauntlet is here for Lake Orion because now you get to deal with, you know, the, the heavy, I mean, like, you get, you, you're you heavyweight yourself, but you get to play Oxford, I mean, like, West Bloomfield, Adams, and um, Clarkson all in a span of four weeks. That's a gauntlet. But this is a situation where the Dragons have been here before. So, if you're Lake Orion, I don't know if you had to change anything. You know, I don't know if you had to change anything with Tierra Hill's injury. I mean, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see. They got Oxford this week. We'll see what happens. I mean, do you ride Jackson Vasquez? Do you ride um, Jane Barrero? Um, your receiving game, you know, I mean, like, you look at this team, I think Lake Orion's fine. I really think they're going to be okay. I mean, but we'll see what happens. We'll see with this team. I mean, defensively, they're pretty good, but they're going to be tested for sure when they play Oxford. So we'll see what happens there. Speaking of Oxford, um, you know, one and two right now. Um, Luke Johnson playing good. Jack Hendricks has been solid. Um, defense has been pretty good. Um, they were, they had a couple questionable calls against them in that game against Clarkston. Um, it was a 23-15 game. Um, so when I look at Oxford, I think they'll be all right. I think they're going to be fine. Defensively, they're still stout. Um, offensively, you know, obviously you got, I think Jack Hendricks has really improved as a quarterback. Um, Luke Johnson's Luke Johnson. He likes to, um, you know, you know what you're going to get from him. I mean, you look at Oxford, I think they're fine. I think Coach Eckline's team's fine. I really do. I mean, I don't, if I would say panic or patient with Oxford, i say patience. You're fine. I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry. You're fine. I mean, even though the schedule looks one and two, you still play a very tough schedule. So, you know, so when I look at the schedule, you know, you're going to be all right. Clarkston, they run a lot with the Bowman Twins. And, you know, the Bowman Twins are going to be the key to Clarkston's whole season. I mean, Alex Wachesco, um, Nick Wachesco, um, he's played well. He's played really well for Clarkston. But, as I mentioned, as the Bowman Twins are going to carry the Wolves this year. You know, people say, well, what about Brady Beck? Brady Beck's a good player. Don't get me wrong. But everything starts and ends with the Bowman Twins. That's really where it goes with Clarkson. So, we'll see. I mean, they got a big one with Adams coming up. We'll see how that one goes. West Bloomfield's been in a bit of a funk. And I know this is going to make Tyler Keith over at Civic Center TV a little nuts. Because the last two weeks, you got to look at is the story for West Bloomfield has been their defense. Their defense in the last two weeks has allowed 50 points. That is un Zach Hilbers like And I know that's going to make Tyler Kitt over at Civic Center TV go nuts. When you look at West Bloomfield offensively, you know, obviously, you know, in the game against Adams, they had a kickoff return for a touchdown by Elijah Durham. Offensively, they've really, they only scored Seven points. That's a credit to Adams' defense, but seven points, you know, that's not going to get the job done. And I know Coach Jack Hilbers knows that. But, you know, for West Bloomfield, they're in a bit of a funk right now. I mean, they didn't look good against Groves, and they didn't look good against, um, against Adams. So, what helps West Bloomfield is they're going to play A&T this week. They're going to be motivated for that one. 
They should be motivated for that one. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, a t right now is in a... I mean, West Bloom is in a bit of a funk right now. I think they can snap out of it. They got the players to do it. I mean, they got the players to do it. They're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. Then Adams. Adams, they look good right now. Rylan Waters looks really good right now. Mateo Humbert looks really good right now. Devere looks really good right now. Adams has somehow managed, you know what I mean, to um, keep scores at um, less than two touchdowns. Because the most they've showed all season has been by two touchdowns. It'll be interesting to see how the Veer does against Clarkston. But the way Adams plays, you know, Ryland Waters is the key to, key to Adams' success right now. The Veer is the key. Their defense has been solid. You know, and obviously against West Bloomfield, what they did was they basically kept the ball for almost the entire quarter. And look where it got them. 21-14 win. West Bloomer, so Adams right now looks, they look really good right now. There's a reason why I had him ranked high to start the year. Reason why. So, we'll see what happens. So when I look at the red right now, um, I would say right now Adams would be the best team right now. Slightly over Lake Orion. Um, and I think a lot of that's a T.R. Hill injury. Um, then I would say, then I would say I'm, West Bloomfield, Clarkston, and Oxford. But we'll see. As I mentioned earlier in the podcast, all my podcasts, I still believe in my in my heart and my guts that all five teams from this division are going to make the playoffs. Doesn't look like it right now, but I still believe all five teams from this division are going to make the playoffs. Okay, now let's look at some picks for week number four here. Um, we got, we got um, Royal Oak going to Livonia Clarenceville. A uh, battle between, first ever meeting between the Ravens and the Trojans. Um, Clarenceville did not look very good last week. Um, you know, but Royal Oak has really struggled all year long. So in this game here, um, Royal Oak, um, I'm going to go Livonia Clarenceville on this one. I just think that the, um, the Trojans have just enough offense um, to um, knock off the Ravens. I, I just think, honestly, um, Royal Oak is really struggling offensively. So I just think that, you know, it's a tough, it's, it, it's Royal Oak's, I think it's Royal Oak's first trip of the, I mean, like second road trip of the year. They went to Oak Park um, um, in week two and ended up losing that one, 19 to seven. Um, Royal Oak, if they, if they step up defensively, they might have a chance in this game against Livoni Clarenceville. But I just think offensively, I just think Livoni Clarence will be too much. Um, they look good against Melvindale week one, but they really haven't been the same team since that game. Um, so I'm going to take um, Livoni Clarenceville week one in that one. Um, then we have Avondale at Pontiac. Um, Pontiac's been struggling. Avondale starting to get their act together a little bit. I still think it's going to continue as is. Um, I think Avondale goes into Pontiac and um, and blows out the Phoenix. It's not going to be close. Um, I just think that Avondale has, um, they're going to run that wing T offense, the misdirection offense. They're going to have a big day against them, against Pontiac's defense. Um, but, you know, you never know. I mean, like, you know, but I think they have enough athletes to contain Kanye Donaldson. Um, so. I got Avenue winning that one there and that one. Then you have Ferndale, Berkeley at Ferndale. Um, I really like Ferndale where they're at right now. I mean, they're playing good football. I mean, they're playing really good football right now. Um, I think the Eagles, you know, the Bears got their first win, but it was against Pontiac. Ferndale's a different animal. So I'm going to take Ferndale on this one over Berkeley. I think this is going to be much closer than the 61-8 blowout last year at Hurley. Um, I I honestly think that um, I think that Berkeley um, I, I mean like I I think Berkeley's gonna try to keep it close. 
But I think defensively, if they can keep um, Cullen Hawk in check, um, I think that um, that could be they can make it into a game. Um, but I just think at the end of the day here, I just think that um, I really think that um, that um, Ferndale is going to find a way and win this game um, on their home field. So you know, especially a bounce back after a um, really terrible home loss in Week One against Madison Heights Lampier. Um, I think they're going to bounce back. I would like Ferndale in that one against um, against um, Berkeley in that game. Um, then we had Troy against Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. As I mentioned, Notre Dame Prep has really played good football. Um, last two weeks, really impressive against Jackson Lutheran Christie and um, Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Um, winning both those games pretty convincingly. Um, Troy, you know, coming off that 32 nothing loss to Lake Orion. Made some plays, um, but when I look at this game here, I, I really like the Irish in this one. I think that the, um, I think this is going to be a close game that people think because, you know, obviously Troy's a D1 school, Notre Dame Prep, I think they're in D, I think they're in D either, I think D5, um, but I think it's going to be a tight game. Um, but I, I really think for, um, for Troy, um, they're gonna, it's going to be a tight game, but I just think at the end of the day, I really like the Irish in this one. It'll be a close game, but I just think Pontiac Notre Dame Prep's going to win this one. Um, it'll be a tight game. That'll be for sure. Um, Troy Athens at Farmington. Julian Johnson plays. is a much different game. Um, I just, I think that, you know, when I look at this game on paper, I just think that um, this should be a Troy Athens win. I'm not sold on Troy Athens. I really haven't been the last few weeks. Um, so I'm going to take Farmington this one. I think Farmington bounces back after what happened last week against North Farmington. Um, I, I just think that at the end of the day here, um, it's just the, um, experience on the defensive side for Farmington. It's going to pay a big dividends here. And I think they're going to want to get a bounce back after what happened last week. Um, losing that game to, um, North Farmington. I think they're going to get it. Um, in that game, another, another revenge game, North Farmington, Bloomfield Hills last year, 50, 49 was that score in overtime in favor of Bloomfield Hills. These two teams are on different stratospheres. Um, I'm going to take North Farmington in this one pretty convincingly. It wouldn't surprise me to score 60 on Bloomfield Hills. It really wouldn't. Bloomfield Hills is that is not very good, especially when you look at the stats, the stats don't lie. You know, when you look at it, I mean, 117 to seven. Last three weeks, that's not going to get the job done. Um, so, and I think um, Duke Blanche is going to have a big game. I think Terrence James is going to have a big game. Um, both of them remember that game last year. Um, and I think it's going to be a much different outcome um, for North Farmington in that game. So we'll see what happens in that one. See them at Oak Park. This is the big one here in the um, division. Um, I think this is going to be a tight game. I really think I, I, I went back and forth in this one. This is going to be Seahome's first true test, I think, going against Oak Park. Um, Oak Park's really been getting better. Um, I think this is a tight game. I went, As I mentioned, I went back and forth. I'm going to take Seahome in this one really close. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if Oak Park wins this game because of the experience. If Oak Park wins this one against Seahome, I think they're back. And I really look at the Knights. I really think that this team could really make some noise going forward. And obviously with Oak Park, um, experience matters. And Oak Park's got a lot of experience. Um, Seahome's still a pretty young team going on the road. Um, but as I mentioned, the Veer keeps teams in games. So in that one, I'm going to take the um, Maples in that one really, really tight in that game. So we'll see what happens going forward in that one. A&T and West Bloomfield. Um, it's a rematch from the Division I State Semifinals for A&T 1-40-35. Um, but a and is a much different team. West Bloomfield coming off two really tough losses. They've been outscored, but they've allowed 50 points in the last two weeks. Um, you know, when I look at this one here, 50-27 last two weeks, it's not a recipe for success. I think this is a get well game for West Bloomfield. I think they're going to find a way and win this one pretty convincingly. Um, I think Elijah Durham has a big game. I think Cameron Flowers is a big game. Um, you know, I, I think Jamal Shakespeare has a big game as well, along with um, 
Bo Jackson. Um, as I mentioned, this is going to be a get well game for um, West Bloom, but I think the Lakers win this one pretty convincingly over the Warriors. Um, I don't think it's going to be close. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, and then we have um, Harper Woods and Stony Creek. At Harper Woods, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, I still think when I look at Harper Woods, they got some issues at quarterback, obviously, with um with them Nate Washell out. Um, I don't know if he'll be back for this game. I know it was an ankle injury he suffered in the game against Nova Detroit Catholic Central, but they got big problems on the defensive side of the football. Stony Creek, you know, they're they got some problems on on the offensive side of the football. Um, quarterback's a big issue for them. Um I'm hoping Coach Rick Powell settles in on a starter. Um, defensively, they haven't looked great. Um, so in this game here, I'm going to take Harper Woods um, really tight here in this game against Stony Creek. Um, now, if Rochelle comes back, I think it's a blowout. Um, but I just think at the end of the day here, I just think that um, Harper Woods has enough talent, enough athletes, plus the travel to Harper Woods could be an issue for Stony Creek. So. We'll see what happens going forward in that one. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see how um, that one goes in in um, over between um, Harper Woods and um, Stony Creek, Rochester and Groves. I mean, this is a battle for um, this is a battle for um, right now to have the edge in the white right now. Um, Groves has experience. They embarrassed Rochester last year. Um, Rochester's going to start a freshman quarterback. You got Jack Lauer going up against a very good Groves defense. Um, I really think Groves goes into Rochester and wins this game. Um, I just think that the um, Falcons, I think that Groves really, both teams are named Falcons. So you got, of course, Groves wears green and gold. Rochester wears blue and white. Um, I, I think in this one, it's going to come down to is, can um, if Rochester can play time possession football against Groves, keep their defense on the field, they might have a chance here. But I just think Groves with their offensive Offensive prowess, the rushing attack, um, their defense has been really good. So I really think Groves will win this one um, over at Rochester. So that'll be something to really see how that one goes. And then the red games, um, you know, you got Clarkston at Adams. Um, this is going to be a really interesting game. I mean, you got you got the quarterback. Um, Battle between um Wachesco and um Waters. Um Mateo Humber going against the going against the Bowman twins. I think in this game, you know, I I went up and down with this. I think, you know, this is gonna be a tight game. This will be a really tight game. We know Clarkson's resiliency. Ask Belleville that question. Um Adams is coming up. They've been battle tested against Romeo. They were, I mean, Rochester, and then of course against West Bloomfield. Um, this is going to be a fun game in the Gold Rush. Uh, I, I just think when you look at the battle lines here, having an experienced quarterback running the Veer offense, that's going to pay big dividends here. But something with Clarkston always comes to mind, especially when you have the Bowman Twins. Especially what happened last year when um. Clarkston ran all over Adams, um, winning that game. Um, I'm gonna go Clarkston tight because when you look at the, when you look at Clarkston, I think the Bowman Twins have a big game here. I think Wachensko has a big game here for Clarkston. I just think that the Wolves have just enough to find a way and win this game. Even though I kind of wish they didn't change their uniforms, you know what I mean, like. I mean, I'm serious with their uniforms. I really don't like their uniforms. It's, I mean, the the home blues look bad. I mean, like especially with the white out with the white on there, and then the road ones with the gold on there. I mean, like they if they kept last year's look, I think that would have been much better. But but beside the point, I think Clarkson wins that game against Adams, um, real tight. And then you have Lake Orion and Oxford. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game because. Now, there's no T.R. Hill for Lake Orion. Oxford, we know, has got experience. They're very tough at home. And, you know, Oxford sent a message last two weeks ago when they knocked off Harper Woods 38 nothing on their home field. They're a very tough team at home. But Lake Orion's been really good on the road. And 
Brody Thompson impressed me last week, scoring three touchdowns against Troy, um, you know, in the second half. This is going to come down to a time possession game. If it does, whoever wins that battle, time possession football is going to win this game. I think it's the battle in the trenches. I think it's going to be a battle in the trenches. If that if that goes, I would have to take Lake Orion in this game. Lake Orion has a player named Jackie Vasquez. They have Jaden Barrero. I think Vasquez is the key in this game for Lake Orion. Because if he plays well, I think this team's going to play well. Defensively, I've got concerns on Lake Orion's side, but also on Oxford's side as well. Both sides got some defensive concerns. But in this game, I'm going to take Lake Orion here real tight because of Jackie Vasquez, because of their offense, and also because, mainly because of their offensive line. I think their offensive line is going to be the key in this game, and I think that offensive line, with the, with the proven experience they have, is going to be is going to be the key in this one. I think they're going to find a way and um, lead Lake Orion to um, a big win against Oxford. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. Um, so we'll see what happens. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay Princess 50 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. Um, we're keeping an eye on a lot of stuff going around the league, so we'll see what happens going forward. All right.